Okay, we're looking at product and some factory, okay? So we have some question here, and I kind of left it out, but what they want us to do with this question is we want to find possible values of x. x is equal to what? What are the possible values of x? Well, the easiest way to do this is to get all of our terms onto one side of the equation. So when we go to start off this term, there's only one term here, and there's one, two terms here. So the quickest or most efficient way would be to move that one term to the other side and then they'll all be on the same side. When I move it to the other side, um, first of all, what's going to be left on this left side of the equation? If I get rid of this and I move it, there's technically nothing left. So what number would represent nothing? Zero. zero, that's right. So we have zero is equal to. And when I move this x squared over, it becomes just positive x squared, right? Because it's negative here. So when it goes to the other side, it becomes positive. Um, and then I'm going to leave the other two terms plus x minus 56. So I just highlighted in red to show you what we did, um, what we moved, okay? So I moved it over. Now I have this. Now I need to find out possible values of x. Well, I need to actually factor in order to do this. In order to factor, I got to kind of realize what form this is in. This is in the standard form, which is helpful for us. And to go from standard, we want to go into factor form. That'll help us find out what our possible zeros are. And in order to do that, we need to factor. Okay, so we need to know what the standard or the parent, parent form of the standard form is, uh, the general form. So that's usually written like this, a x squared plus b x plus c. Is that familiar to you? Yeah. a, b, and c, good. And when we um, go to actually go to the factor form, if we're going to do product and sum, what we're looking for is a times c, so two values that multiply to whatever a times c is, and then those same two values need to add up to what our b value is. So I'm going to kind of write them on the side here. We want two values that multiply to a times c, okay, and those same two values need to add to our b term. Okay, so we need to know what our B term is, we need to know our C term. So I'm going to rewrite this below it again, and we're going to kind of reference. So 0 is equal to x squared plus x minus 56. Okay, well, what's my A term here? Uh, x. Mm -hmm. And what would the coefficient in front of the x be if there's no number written? What do we assume it is? Uh, just 1. It's just 1. Okay, so our A term is 1. So we know we're going to have 1 here. And what's our C term? Uh, negative negative 56. So 1 times negative 56, well, it's pretty simple. It's just negative 56. So whenever the a term is 1, we really don't even need to multiply by a. So a lot of times teachers won't even tell you about that. But if our a term isn't 1, then we have to go through this process here. So that's why I want to show you so that you have a method that works even if a isn't 1. Okay. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 56. Okay. Um, I'll rewrite it down here so it's a little nicer. Two numbers that multiply to negative 56. And what's our B term in this? What value is in front of that X? So there's nothing there. What do we assume? Just one. Just one. So we need another two terms that add up to just positive one. Okay. Now the quickest way to kind of go about this, because there are like an infinite number of values that can be added and subtracted to equal one, let's just look for some whole number factors of 56. Can you think of factors of 56? I know we have 1 in 56. 1 in 56, even if one of them is negative, that's never going to add to 1, right? Um, 2. 2 is 28, I think. Yeah, 2 times 28. Again, you're never going to add 2 and 28 or subtract 2 and 28 and get 1. Do you know any other factors? If not, that's okay. I can come up with 1 or 2. Um, how about... 8 and 7. 8 and 7. Very good. Nice. So if we have 7 times 8, that works out nice. And 7 plus 8? Yeah, if one of them's negative, which one of these need to be negative in order to be add to 1 when we have 7 and 8? If I make the 8 negative, what will this add up to? 7 plus negative 8. Then it would be negative 1. That's right. So in other words, we need the 7 to be negative. Okay, negative 7 plus 8 gives us positive 1, and negative 7 times 8 gives us negative 56. Boom, we got it. This works out really, really nicely. Okay, now, technically, there's this whole splitting and factoring here, but because our a value is 1, it's kind of a shortcut. 
So I'm going to show you the long way, and then I'm going to show you the shortcut from here. So remember that from here, we can really just jump to our last step. But I'm going to show you the step when the a value is not 1. Okay. So what would normally happen here is we go 0 is equal to, we can say there's a 1 here, 1x one squared. And this is called like decomposition, this part here. Okay. We decompose. We have plus 8x, so that's one of these terms, and then minus 7x. Okay, And the reason we're allowed to do this, and we still bring out the negative 56, the reason we're allowed to do this is because 8x minus 7x equals that 1. So we've decomposed it. We've split it into two numbers. And then from here, we would do some common factoring. Okay, So I don't know if this seems familiar to you. So I need a common term that comes out of x squared and 8x. Well, I know x will come out. So when I pull x out, in other words, I'm going to divide both of these by the value. Ooh. I'm going to divide both of those by the value of x. When we common factor by x, do you know what we're going to be left with when we divide x squared by x? Do you know what that ends up becoming? What value that is? So when we divide it, we just kind of drop the power. And as you can tell, I'm trying to fiddle and fix something while we say this. Hey, connection lost. But no, it's found. Yay. Okay, so when we divide, essentially that power disappears. So we'll, when you divide x squared by x, you're left with just the value of x. And when you divide 8x by x, you're left with just 8. Think of it like you took the x out. It's on the outside in the common factor. Over here, um, we need a common term. Well, I know for my factors, I could take 7 out of 56 and out of 7. And since it's negative, I'm going to take negative 7 now. So I'm going to take out negative 7. So I'm going to divide both of these by negative 7. When I divide negative 7x by 7, I end up with just x. Negative 56 divide negative 7, I get positive 8. Now, if you notice, both of these are the same. Technically, what happens is we common factor again. But the quick thing from here is what we do is we just say x plus 8. That's one of the brackets. And the other bracket is whatever is left over. That's x minus 7. So we have x minus 7. And then we have our factored form. Now, seems like a lot of work. But if you remember, I said that we could have jumped to the end when the a value is 1. So from here, once we got these two numbers, we can kind of skip this and jump down here. This is only when the a value is 1. Because if you remember, positive 8, that's in there. And negative 7, that's in there. We can just build it that way. Okay. So I showed you a long method, but this is a, a, there is a shortcut to it. We still don't have an answer, though. We still need to know what x is equal to. When you think about this, think of this as a term times another term. In order to multiply something by another number and get 0, one of them has to be 0. Okay, So what we need to do is we need to split this. I'm going to split this. 0 is equal to x plus 8, or 0 is equal to x minus 7. One of these terms must be 0 in order to create a 0. So these are the two possible answers. Uh, we isolate for x. x is equal to negative 8. And we isolate for x over here. x is equal to positive 7. So your two answers are negative 8 and positive 7. And it looks like I did a lot of work for a relatively simple question. But the method I showed you, again, if A isn't 1, this method will work for when A isn't 1, which is a much more complex question. Okay?